What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today you're joining me in Garner, North Carolina, right off Interstate 40, and we are at the Ayana Rechargery. And let me give you guys a full tour, and we're also gonna charge up my F Lightning. Well, we are at station 4A. I'm going to activate it with my wife's phone with the Ford Pass app. So this is the public charging app. We'll pull up Garner Rechargery 4A, activate Activating charger, we'll see a pop up on the screen here in just a second. There we go. So it shows the price, 39 cents a kilowatt hour. I'll talk about the pricing here in a moment, but very reasonable. Plug in connector, you can see it flashing there indicating that it's activated. Open the CCS flap. That had some twist to it. Someone like twisted that before they put it back in. Just like that. See the handshake time should be pretty darn quick, especially since the connector is activated already. You can, of course, also use the payment terminal here. Use Apple Pay, credit card, whatever. Uh, they also have these nice little uh, sunshades to them too to help reduce the glare. Trash cans, windshield washer. We're at 17% charge if you looked on the Ford Pass app. Clicking should start. There we go. Go ahead and charging details, we'll watch it ramp up. You can see the current, the voltage, that's your current power, that's your max power, and then your time, and then that'll become a range once we start charging a bit. And then on this screen, you can also see the running cost, you can see the cost detail. Now we're almost at 500 amps, but still ramping. There's another lightning charging there. Looks like we are just about to hit 500 amps. Towards the very end, 490 to 500 or so. Definitely takes a little bit longer to do that. That's usually just the way that the vehicle ramps. So we are charging and let's continue with the tour of this site. So here we are, Garner Rechargery, open 24 seven. Under a canopy, we have five Alpatronic HYC 400s. Uh, there's one up front here, ADA stall CCS. You have two CCS units over here. And then you have two NAX units over here. 24 seven EV charging and market. You have the rechargery market, of course, with the Amazon just walk out tech uh, that I talked about quite a bit uh, during their grand opening launch. And these are actually facing opposite directions. So you have screens on both sides. You have a pull through aisle on both sides closer to the store. And then these two outer stalls are to are pull in, which I think is totally fine. Um, I think as long as charging sites have pull through, not every stall needs to be pulled through. I think it wouldn't hurt if they were, but it's not necessary per se. Here we have an interesting mural. Looks like we've got state of North Carolina. We have a star. Uh, I think that's a bowl. I think that's probably representing Raleigh, open road, rainbows. I don't know, it's a cool mural, it's pretty. The colors tie in with uh, the kind of the rest of the appeal here or the aesthetic here. Got just your normal equipment for the building itself over here, some heat pumps, AC units, all that fun stuff. We have an open canopy, which if you watch the out of spec interview, um, they're not entirely sure what's going to be there, but something will be there at some point. Um, whether that's another charger or some additional like vacuums or washer fluid, whatever kind of stuff. Looks like they've got some just leftover stuff from the former occupation of this building, if you will, back there that maybe they're still figuring out what to do with. Uh, you have some electrical equipment in here because you have the electrical Knox box. So that way uh, that's basically it's a standard key that fire departments and such have a key to. That way they can shut down the site if necessary, even though the equipment's in that room. You have a transformer in here. And if you watch the out of spec tour of this site that Kyle did with Ricardo Stamati from Ayana, uh, there's a 2,500 KVA in there. Here we have another lightning charging, which is pretty sweet to see. 
Yeah, there you can see the 2500 kVA transformer. It's a pretty big equipment pad for a transformer, but probably required based on the clearances from Duke, if I had to guess. Uh, it's actually built up a fair amount, maybe for flood resistance. Here you can see the uh, kind of the thing showing uh, what's at this site or a local rechargery electrifying the 27529 Garner. So here we have it. Let's go inside and check it out. So now we're going to go into the Ayana rechargery market. To get in here, it's locked during the day. So you scan this QR code. So here we go, Ayana Garner Access. So I'll fill out this form quick and then we'll have the access. So then I'll get a text here to open the door. So I just got the text with the link. So we're gonna do, I don't know whether this is east or west. I guess this is east, it's labeled there. I missed that initially, so we'll hit east entrance. Unlocked, let's see, there we go. And so now we're in. And here you have napkins, utensils, got some nice little art in here maybe they have some additional things planned here i'm not entirely sure but the iana brand work there the logo all this nice art stuff on the walls here you have the restrooms that you also unlock with the qr code and then there you have the qr code to do so uh some funny uh bathroom artwork <laughs> and then we're going to try the just walk out amazon market you also have some nice little um chairs table um i think there's some outlets around if i remember from kyle's video otherwise there's some on the walls and such so let's go in here and then i've already enrolled with the amazon one system because i've used that at whole foods so we're actually just going to scan my hand bethany are you going to join me yeah. all right so i'm going to scan my hand just like that and just like that, we can go in without doing that. You can also do that with contactless card or Apple Pay, whatever. So here you have all the different things. Just looking quick, it looks like the prices are very reasonable. Um, $3 for like a Haribo gummy. Yeah, I mean, pretty standard like convenience store type prices. So I like to see that. You got some frozen meals. I don't think I saw a microwave to be able to like heat them up so i guess just take those home so i think that's maybe something they they could add if they don't have it already planned looks like maybe someone left this one open with all that ice um you've got some healthier stuff over here some of these like nature's bakery like protein bar stuff nature's valley also some unhealthier things definitely all the candy you'd expect topa chico bubbly all the different kinds of waters some energy drinks, coffees. Personally, I'd love to see some yerba mates here, but they do have Celsius. And then quite a few other things. In addition to the like normal food and snacks, you also have some of the like things you may want on a road trip, like some medications, phone chargers, cough drops, toiletries, uh, even disinfectant wipes, Kleenex, all things that you may want on a road trip, which I think is pretty nice. And then once you pick something up and go out, then it just fills you. So you have all these cameras up here that basically track you around here and see what things you pick up um, with sensors and with the cameras themselves to know what you bought. So we're going to figure out what we're going to get, and then we'll just walk out, and then I'll be emailed a receipt since I'm enrolled in the Amazon One program. Well, we got our snack. I got fast break. Bethany got a fast break in Doritos. And over here, there's a Dunkin' as well that we're just noticing. So if you want something like prepared food or whatever, that's a very easy walk just across the parking lot, basically. And they have pretty long hours. So another option for food. And let's go see what my truck is charged up to. Let's see. Pull up the charge curve. Already up to 53%. We're still holding steady at 122 kilowatt. That's kind of the steady state 
charging rate. We've been charging for a little over 20 minutes. So it looks like we peaked at 181 kilowatts and then it came down and now we're holding nice and steady. So averaging 140 kilowatts so far, we'll probably charge up to about 80%. We have about 200 miles home. But yeah, this is a lovely spot. And then there's also a gas station next door. Doesn't look the nicest, but you could certainly go there if you want more options. KFC, another gas station. McDonald's across the highway, which is certainly not ideal to cross. That's not going to be pleasant to cross to get there. But I mean, this is pretty much the benchmark for charging in 2025. Uh, you have pull through stalls, you have 24 seven amenities, you have 400 kilowatt charging with 10 ports on the site. You have NAX and CCS. So no matter what car you have, you have a canopy. And what I really love about this canopy especially is that not only is it over the chargers and uh, where you're parking, but you're also covered going from the, your car charger into the shop. So that way, like if you came here on a rainy day, you wouldn't have to go outside at all. So that is just awesome. And I think that's how a lot of these really should be because that's what EV drivers, I think, are expecting. No one wants to stand out in the rain. That's never fun. Beautiful branded canopy. I think that might even light up at night. Uh, and then this is a great location as well. It's right off of I-40. And for those that aren't familiar, I-40, uh, not only does it go across the country, but in this case, it's right on I-40 before you get into Raleigh. So just outside of Raleigh, basically, between Raleigh and Wilmington. So I think a common use case for this will be people coming home from Wilmington to Raleigh if they don't have home charging or if they're going from Wilmington to Raleigh uh, and they want to have range to go around in Raleigh. Or if you're having to leave from Raleigh, going to Wilmington or wherever, um, and you're not fully charged, you need that top off to get there because speaking from experience, charging in Wilmington is not great. So hopefully Ayana will fix that as well. We shall see. So something that I think is important to talk about in DC fast charging is pricing. And here at the Ion site, they have an introductory price, which is shown on the screen here, 39 cents per kilowatt hour plus tax, no idle fee, no flat fee. So that's what you pay, 39 cents a kilowatt hour. They'll add tax. Here's my session that we're still charging. We plugged in at 17%. We're charged up to 81%, normal 80% dip on a Lightning. Uh, we'll probably get out of here in a few minutes. Um, and we're at 33.95 right now, adding 87 kilowatt hour cost detail, 33.99. And as far as pricing goes, that is very competitive. So there is a Tesla supercharger that's open to Teslas and non-Teslas just on the other side of the interstate. And here's the pricing there. So from midnight to, or sorry, from 11 p.m. until 9 a.m., it is 24 cents a kilowatt hour if you drive a Tesla or if you pay Tesla's membership fee. Otherwise, it's 31 cents a kilowatt hour. And during the day, so 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., it's either 41 cents a kilowatt hour um, if you drive a Tesla or pay the membership fee or 53 cents a kilowatt hour for anyone else. So if I were to go there in my Lightning, use plug and charge, I would be charged 53 cents a kilowatt hour between 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. Uh, and what that means is that this Ionosite is actually cheaper and for a lot of vehicles faster. Uh, one thing to note as well is that Ionis price is plus tax, whereas Tesla's price is tax inclusive. So the 39 cents on the Ionis unit versus the 41 cents for member or Tesla driver, those are realistically probably about the same depending on exactly what the tax is, but close enough that I would rather be here than at the Smithfield's chicken across the street. I mean, maybe if you want a meal, that's a better option, but um, this is much better most hours of the day and has all the snacks, quick service, all that fun stuff. So just a quick note about the pricing. But would love to hear what you guys think, if there are any additional amenities or things you'd like to see here, but I don't really see anything missing other than a microwave, maybe a sink in that area would be nice just for some of those frozen meals. Um, and then of course there'll be vacuums and probably windshield washer fluid, all that kind of fun stuff at some point here anyway, since that's something that I Ayana is doing. But this is awesome. Great job to Ayana. Love to see it. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. 
see you guys on the next one.